uh, our store virtual, uh, all of the, the HP storage brands are now store X, if you like. Uh, that portfolio is growing 30% year over year, 38% uh, th and uh, tremendously fast growth rate. Uh, now set against that, we have some businesses that are currently in decline. Tape uh, and our EVA platforms, which are based on older IP. But one of the most important announcements that we had uh, yesterday was the fact that the, for our massive EVA install base, uh, about 40,000 that are still out there running, uh, we've provided probably the most exceptional new e next generation EVA we can in the form of this brand new 3 pass store serve 7000 with a lot of EVA DNA built into the new uh, platform. Uh, also online non-disruptive uh, data migration capability uh, built in. So literally it's going to be easy for those 40,000 customers when they're ready to migrate to a new 3 pass platform uh, almost easier than it would be to go to a new EVA. Uh, and we're really encouraged by that. Okay, so now one of the hottest trends, of course, in the business is um, mm -hmm. flash or non-volatile or you know, whatever you want to call it, but, but gen you know, generally SSD and flash. So what is the strategy to take advantage of and exploit that growth? Well, part of our, our you know, vision of, of polymorphic simplicity is, is really uh, about an architecture that can adapt to uh, not just different shapes and forms, but also being able to provide common data services across not just um, f uh, block storage, but also file and object, but also from HDD-based environments through to hybrid HDD and solid state to all flash environments in the future. And one of the things that the entire industry is doing right now is trying to see whether their operating systems, their storage operating systems, are optimized architecturally for this new all flash world that is emerging in the future. And everyone's having to go through it. And you can see some of the answers to that question coming through. If you look at the steps EMC recently took, they must have looked at Ingenuity, their VMAX operating system, and looked at Flare, their VNX operating system, and said, in the all flash world, maybe those two operating systems aren't the right answer. What did they do? They went out and bought Extreme IO because they needed a new operating system. Now we have done exactly the same analysis. Uh, and day one architectural decisions are really the important issue. And at three part, our day one architectural decision was building a very small page size, 16 kilobytes. And with a three level virtualization engine of an operating system we built on top of that, we know that it is perfectly positioned and adapted for the all flash world in the future. So we can promise our customers, you can invest in three part technology today and you can have a solution that meets the all flash world in the future. And we have steps on the way. So, you know, with the new 7000, we introduced an all SSD array, uh, up to 240 SSDs uh, in the new 7000 platform, delivering 320,000 IOPS in a single package. You can federate them together. If you need more IOPS, you can use our new guaranteed uh, quality of service platform called uh, Priority Optimization, a software package that allows you to uh, divvy up uh, all of those IOPS between different tenants and applications on the platform. Uh, so we feel we're in a really pro uh, promising position to service customers' high performance requirements now, but also give them investment protection in the future. So that's really important, I want to make sure I understand it. So, so if I were competing against you and I were one of these all flash guys, I'd say, hey, 3 par was great for the day. Uh, they introduced all these great features, not the least of which was thin provisioning, and then everybody else copied that. They tried to bolt it on, and that was your with marketing a, at the time. With a chubby provisioning <laughs> model. <so. laughs> yeah, not yeah, so yeah. thin, right? <laughs> not Thinish. so thin. Thinner, Finish. thinner. <laughs> um, yeah. So I would say, hey, these guys are doing a bolt on on, on all flash erasing. You're saying because your day one architectural uh, decision of a 16K page size, that gives you what? An extra flexibility, no, granularity? It gives, you, it gives you the architectural enablement to be able to move to an all flash based environment. Don't forget, if you, if you look at some of the kind of core architectural page sizes that you see, for instance, in an EMC VMAX, it was 768 megabytes. That's what their, their thin provisioning page size was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work in an all flash world, which is why they had to buy Extreme IO. 
uh, we have a different modern operating system that we can take advantage of. And, and you can layer on, we've been talking about software-defined storage, software-led services. You can layer on software-led services and, 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 and apply them to that three-par architecture, is that right? Things like primary dedupe and compression, I mean, you haven't announced those yet, but those mm -hmm. seem to be fundamental to keeping the cost of flash down. We or, absolutely believe. So, so you know, one of the advantages of the three-par architecture is the ASIC. This ASIC allows us to accelerate thin provisioning, which is a form, a specialized form of deduplication. So we will be able to take similar advantage when we introduce kind of primary deduplication based technologies and other forms of compaction technologies that will be important. Does that in the go future. to software at some point in time, that ASIC function, or uh, as we see I, this software you know, led trend? At every single generation, we take the decision. We look at the ASIC and we say, does it give more value? Is, yeah, where's the value right <laughs> yeah. now? We, we make that decision yeah. every single generation. Yeah, okay. David, and we've never got to a generation it hard, yeah. when, when <laughs> it hasn't been So I know you guys are geeking out and getting in the weeds there, <laughs> but I want to ask, ask a high level question because Not um, too I'm a huge fan of the software defined move right now. I yes. think it's very relevant. I wrote a blog post about it yesterday, but I want you to, to tell the audience, what is the definition of software defined storage? Um, because it's a great, real relevant trend right now, which you guys talked about yesterday, but what is software defined storage? What, is it, what does it mean, what are the elements? What is this new um, polymorphic capability? Because you've got some new stuff there that not a lot of people know about in the mainstream. Yeah. Can you wrap that up and communicate what that definition is to you? Sure, well, well software defined storage is the concept of uh, running rich storage data services uh, on industry standard servers, uh, and one of the implementations is as a virtual machine. Uh, and now, why do people want to do that? Well, the power of industry standard services keeps increasing, you know, and the cost dropping. Uh, and so for some people, building out common architectures built based on those building blocks is very attractive. Um, now, HP was in an advantageous position four years ago of having acquired a company called Left Hand that actually was a pioneer of software-defined storage, this ability to run software services as a virtual machine on industry standard servers. So our solutions are hardware agnostic. You can run what is now called our store virtual VSA, uh, either on uh, HP hardware, Dell hardware, IBM hardware. Uh, but it's also very importantly, unlike other people trying to get into this, hypervisor agnostic. So you can run it as a VMware, in a VMware hypervisor, you can run it in a, a Microsoft Hyper-V hypervisor, and you can cluster all of these different solutions together into one storage system. So you have a tremendously flexible, scalable uh, platform to deliver rich data services on. So the software is extending the innovation of storage and what it touches, and, That's and coordinating and orchestrating kind of the, the benefits, using virtual, virtualization as an example. It's using virtualization as the, the basic platform to deliver this on. And now, HP's vision, by the way, is that we think that many different architectures need to be expressed as, um, as uh, what we call virtual SAN appliance, storage appliances. So you may end up with an information protection virtual storage appliance or an information retention virtual storage appliance. So for those people wanting to build up architectures on industry standard servers, they have that ability okay. in the future. But one last thing that I'll add, because the polymorphic element of this is that our store virtual VSA also comes as a better together appliance where we integrate the software directly with our uh, ProLiant Gen 8 servers uh, and package it up as a server, which is our store virtual 4000 range. We just introduced a new version uh, that supports both iSCSI and Fiber Channel. And by the way, that appliance <coughs> works with other industry standard servers in the same cluster. So you have ultimate investment protection. Well, as an aside, I just tweeted, the Cube is a polymorphic platform right now with David Scott, uh, the HP Storage Live, so I just tweeted that to the HP Discover <laughs> hashtag, so we got that word in there. Uh, my next follow-up question is, okay, how does that stack up with the competition? Because uh, you mentioned specifically EMC, there was a question about NetApp on, when, on the Q&A. Okay, the vision is great, extends beautifully into the SSD, that's what's going on in solid state, software is innovative, 
totally awesome messaging. Okay, how does that stack rank up against the competition? Well, you know, the, the competition really is the epitome of, uh, of what I call this fragmented storage complexity. Um, if you look at EMC, you raise them. They have five different primary storage architectures now. Uh, if you think about it, they have VMAX, they have VNX, they have VNXE, they have Solaire if you want the NAS solution, they, want, uh, they have uh, VPLEX because they have different architectures and they need to use it to hook them all together. That is five different kind of training regimens, really complex manageability. Many large enterprises have three or four of those and that's just primary storage. They can market that as Quint store. They have, <laughs> they have <laughs> yeah, oh, they have, uh, they have three different <laughs> information retention architectures, if you think about it. Um, uh, they have Isilon as a, a file, uh, scale out file system. They have, uh, uh, what else? Uh, Centera. Atmos, uh, Centera, mm -hmm. as object based solutions. Uh, you know, different architectures for different needs, different training, different manageability, poor utilization. Same is true in backup with uh, Data Domain and Avamar. You know, Avamar they promote for client-side virtualization, backup, and, and data domain for the data center. It's just fragmented storage complexity, and we think this is a fundamental weakness in servicing customers' needs of uh, eliminating complexity, eliminating costs. Well, so, so financially it seems to be working. Um, they got a, a, you know, a solution for every problem. They sell a lot of services. You know, yep, notice yep. the services top line, EMC's services top line I'm is sure growing. I'm sure customers love paying those services. Well, I'm just bills. saying, yeah. if the services top line is growing faster than the product top yeah. line. Um, so does that, and IBM's obviously had, had had a similar model over the past several years. Does at some point, does, does, does that break? Well, what, what I think is that you're seeing signs of it breaking right now. If you look at the high end of the primary storage marketplace where 3PAR has played until this date, uh, last year we took 2.6 points of market share uh, away in the high end. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we're taking most of that market share away from EMC. Right. Um, so where we play, we had success. Uh, if you look at the purpose-built uh, backup appliance space, um, there are only two companies who have double-digit market share, but we took 3.3 points of market share in that space. Uh, so again, with store once, we're having tremendous success, and, and you know you're seeing it. We we reported 45% year-over-year growth rates for store once, 75% year-over-year growth rates for H uh, for uh, three-pass store serve. Um, tremendously rapid growth. So where we play, we're turning around and taking market share. And now with the latest announcements of the new mid-range 7,000, finally bringing tier one storage down into the mid-range price point we're hoping to replicate that success. Yeah, I mean, we see, uh, John's saying, we see the software-led piece is really crucial because, I mean, let's face it, I, I mentioned this yesterday at the press conference that all of you guys, you mark up Seagate disk drives a lot, and that's cool, because you, and, and the way you get away with it is you have all this great software. Well, charge me for the software, that's cool. Yeah. I'm good with that. If you can abstract that and layer it on commodity hardware, and you guys be the Google engineers and the Facebook engineers, for me, I'll pay for that value. So my question is, are you in a better position to do that than some of your competition? You know, all of our innovation is in software, pr primarily right now. It, you know, it's in these modern storage operating systems. Uh, because HP has the strength of being an industry standard server player, uh, as well as a strong networking player and a strong storage player, in this evolution towards kind of converged infrastructure, we have a huge advantage but we also have this huge advantage is we know how to run on an open industry standard platform and, and we fully intend to leverage that advantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My final question, because we're getting on time here, is really to talk about something that's really trending in, in, in the news cycle around acquisitions, obviously with HP. You were part of a very successful and very high priced acquisition with 3PAR. You were on that side of the, the house as an entrepreneur, staying with HP, doing a great job at executing through that. Don, Dave Donatelli talked with me after the conference yesterday saying, it's right on plan. Your 7,000 announcement was very, I mean, groundbreaking, impressive. You bring it into the masses. Um, he says that's right on plan. You've successfully executed, executed that whole acquisition effectively. The storage group has gone from the old way to the new way. Uh, as an executive, you have done an amazing job in watching that. Uh, you just want to say that. But I wanted to ask you, um, and Dave and I were talking about this last night, uh, your leadership style 
um, is impressing a lot of people. You're, you're a team builder, you have technical chops, you have executive capabilities. What's your secret formula for management and you've done the successful acquisition, which is hard to do, and you're growing the business. What is your leadership uh, secret or style that's been so successful for you? You know, I'm not quite sure I'm as good as you point out there, but <laughs> I, I'll tell you one thing. I, I think it's very important to do a, maybe four things right. You, you, have to, you have to have the right strategy. It's really important to get it up front, understand, think through the different alternatives, what may happen in the future. Uh, but then you have to have the right team and you have to hire the right people. And you, have to be, have, you must be scared of hiring people who are much better than you in their domains. Uh, you've got to communicate the right thing so that you've got to make sure that strategy is always consistently driven through the organization so everybody is absolutely clear on what they are uh, doing. Uh, but then you've got to make sure the right thing gets done and that's all about execution. And so you know, I just focus on those four, trying to get those four things right and I, Hope everything else follows. Well, you know, a hat tip to you, you've done an amazing job coming from a fast growing startup. I know HP paid a premium, but the integration has been phenomenal. The success obviously speaks for itself. You know, I wanted to highlight that in, in lieu of the whole acquisition uh, conversation around HP. It was very successful, and you're doing a great job, and uh, congratulations. Yeah, I second that. I mean, you know, a lot of people thought that you were just, hey, big, big exit with 3PAR, that's great, but you, you've clearly put your, your time and energy into it, and I think it's, it's showing, and we're yeah. starting to see you know, some really bright signs in the HP storage portfolio, so congratulations on that. Well, I'm delighted. I have a fantastic organization within HP storage that, that every, every bit of that accolade is, is due to. Uh, they yeah. work their hearts and souls out to, mm. to make sure that we're delivering yeah. real innovation. And I, I, I want to make the point, innovation is alive and thriving at HP. And, and, and you know, HP Converged Storage is a real proof point for it and our ability to work with our partners in HP like Autonomy, our server divisions to deliver real integrative innovation as well. It's another proof point and mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited. Yeah, We're very just very impressive demo, you brought in big data, you have software defined uh, execution, great relevant story, great products, congratulations. Uh, David Scott, shining example, some great success within HP and continue to grow. Uh, We're SiliconANGLE striking the signal from the noise, there it is here inside theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.